Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail critics, and of course my underwater train finders. You are the reason why this content remains stupendous, I hope. I don't want to overinflate my expectations. And today, we are going to discuss... Something that's been long requested that I do, um, because I haven't done it in quite a while. Here's five of the best trains ever, part seven. Yep. You're welcome. The PKP class EP07. I've always tried to keep things Mr. Worldwide over here, but I understand that many of you have pointed out that there are many many other countries that I have not yet discussed. And I have talked about Poland recently, but I haven't talked about the EP-07s. These are a class of standard gauge electric locomotives that were mainly used for passenger trains, and by mainly used, I mean still used. Now, PKP Intercity is a long distance passenger transport service that runs over in Poland, and they've used the ep 7 since about 1995. They're actually rebuilds though, Originally, they were the EU-07, which was originally built in 1965. They were modified enough to have a new designation, but they are still remarkably similar to that original EU-07. The longevity of the design shouldn't be understated, as they are incredibly good electric locomotives. They're reliable, capable of 78 miles per hour, 125 kilometers per hour, with a tractive effort of about 62,950 pounds. That's 280 kilonewtons. They've gone through a couple modernizations over the last couple decades, but they're still pretty much the same locomotive as was modified in 1995. And even there, they weren't all that different from their original form from 1965. Poland really likes keeping things around and modernizing, and, you know, they do a good job at it. These are genuinely good locomotives that are doing the work. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And if you can just fix it, don't replace it. It's kind of where we're at with it right now. The NZRKB class. This was a group of six mixed traffic locomotives built for the New Zealand Railways. There we go. See, Mr. Worldwide, I told you. They're 484s, which would make them Northerns. They were given interesting squarish streamlining, but this was not done necessarily because they wanted them to be streamlined in the radical sense. They didn't much care about that when they built them in 1939, but as originally built, they were given ACFI feed water systems, and that was pretty state-of-the-art, but people hated it because it looked gross. They just felt it didn't look nice, which is an interesting thing to complain about, but then again, modern rail fans complain about how locomotives look all the time, so I'm not entirely surprised by this. Both the KBs and the KAs, actually, were fitted with shrouding and streamlining specifically to hide the ACFI system. The aesthetic shrouding worked to clean up the appearance of them, but it was actually open at the top where it could gather soot and dust. After the war, the aesthetic shrouding was actually removed entirely, and the ACFI speed water system was replaced with an exhaust steam injector instead. That being said, despite so few of them being built, they were actually really good, genuinely so. They were reliable and pretty fast by New Zealand standards of that era, though they were introduced pretty late in terms of the steam age. Despite this, they lasted until 1968. That's when the last one ran. But there is one still in preservation. And it was only there out of sheer luck, thanks to rail fans. See, NCR did donate members of the regular Ks as well as the KAs for preservation. But since the KBs were so similar, they didn't bother donating one of them, but enthusiasts purchased one at the scrap market rate, thereby saving KB968, who was supposed to be cut up a week after her last excursion. She is currently undergoing restoration to mainline operating condition at Mainline Steam's Christchurch Depot. So despite being the last of her kind, it seems like she's getting a happy ending at the very least for an incredible piece of New Zealand technology. The British Rail Class 47. Son of a- I'm not allowed to say bad words here. 
This is supposed to be fairly family friendly and you are ruining it! The Class 47s, or Brush Type 4, is a diesel electric that was developed in the 1960s by Brush Traction. Now you'd think, saying that, that means they'd be really bad. Because it's 1960s during the modernization plan and it's a diesel electric, but this is one of the ones that worked out. 47s actually turned out to be pretty good. Genuinely so. Brush did a really good job with them. 512 wound up being produced between 1962 and 1968, with a speed of 75 miles per hour, 121 kilometers per hour, an attractive effort of 55,000 pounds, 245 kilonewtons. These were impressive and actually usable diesel electrics for British rail. They could actually, like, utilize them, put them on the rails and expect them to run without too much difficulty at all. In fact, they were so good that, um, and I can't believe this, they are still in service now. Yes, really. Quite a few, in fact. 32 are in preservation, which is good. We like keeping these whole things around. And 33 were converted into Class 57s, but 51 of the 47s are still in service now. Still working on the British rail lines, even after privatization. These things are pushing 60, and they're still out there trucking away. There are many different versions of them, actually, with slight different modifications, because I think that was one of their best traits, is that they could be modified to do a variety of different things, making them very, very flexible. The reliability certainly helped with that, too, because even when they were modified, they could be expected to work, when a lot of the other diesels, well, couldn't. A good showing from brush traction in British Rail. Which, when it comes to the 1960s, is not a sentence I get to say very often. So I don't want to hear I can't say a good thing about British Rail ever again, okay? Because I can! It's just... They make it hard sometimes, alright? The NS Class 1300. I want you all to realize what I've been going through lately, it's very important to me. Because I've been waging an internal war in my Discord server against a few fans. They call themselves fans. I'm not even sure they are at this point. They must like me a whole lot and like the content, because they are, well, Dutch. And that's fine. I guess they could take a break from their never-ending war against Poseidon. To harass me, though, because they have been demanding persistently, nearly every day, for the last three or four months, that I talk about Dutch trains. It's imperative that I do this for their sake. Now, I've gotten plenty of requests from people from other countries to talk about trains from their country. And that's fine. I'm totally okay with that. And I actually encourage it. I would love to talk about more other locomotives and trains and other such things from other countries. So if you have a suggestion, feel free to say something. But the Dutch, in particular, at least these few, have chosen to be oddly persistent about this. And I am notorious for not doing what I'm told, purely out of spite. But, at the same time, I respect their commitment to their cause, and they actually have been very friendly about the whole thing. So, okay, let's talk about another Dutch locomotive. The Class 1300 was in service for 48 years, from 1952 until 2000. So already, we have um, an impressive display. These are electric locomotives. They were actually built at the same time as the Class 1100s at Alstom, and they were based off of the SNCF Class CC 7100s. The 1300s at the end of the day are basically just a larger six axle Coco version of the Class 1100s. The first one was delivered in 1952, and they proceeded to remain in service for nearly 50 years. They had a maximum speed of 81 miles per hour, 130 kilometers per hour, with a tractive effort of 54,000 pounds. And though they were withdrawn in the year 2000, in 2015, number 1304 was put back into service for a private operator, HSL Logistic. She actually broke down the following year, but that was due to operator error, not the locomotive itself. She was repaired later, in 2018, and deployed by the Fair Trains Foundation. The objective of them is to have museum equipment restored and preserved from the revenues of their use. Interesting idea, and 1304 is supposed to be joined in this task by 1315. Number 1312 is actually another working representative of them, 
for the Dutch Railway Museum, with 1302 serving as a spare part donor. Despite only 16 of them being built, their um, history, and the fact they lasted so long, I think speaks for itself. And there's much love for them when it comes to the Netherlands, since, well, they're being put back into service in some capacities. That's not a bad showing at all. The Milwaukee Road Class S3. Hey look, another Northern, a 484. And it's Milwaukee Road, who I made a video about because of their considerable failures, but this wasn't one of them. The S3s were really, really, really good. 10 of these were produced between July and September of 1944 by Alco, and they were operated by the Milwaukee Road until the mid 50s. So they only lasted about 10 years. That's not a good showing at face value compared to the longevity of the other locomotives I've had on this list, but you don't understand how good the S3s really were. Their loss had nothing to do with the fact that they were bad at all. It had to do with the fact that Milwaukee Road chose to dieselize like pretty much everybody else did. Technically, they were actually smaller and less powerful than Milwaukee's earlier Class S2s, and they were more like the Class S1s, but they were equipped with roller bearings and the reliability and utility spoke for itself. They could pull pretty much whatever the railroad wanted, with little difficulty, if at all. They were capable of speeds of 100 miles per hour, 160 kilometers per hour, and their tractive effort was 62,119 pounds. That's 276.32 kilonewtons. They were genuinely good, but again, dieselization came into the fold. Milwaukee put them into storage in 1954, but the equipment trusts on them hadn't expired yet, so they couldn't be scrapped or sold. Then, two of them eventually wound up being saved in 1956. Milwaukee Road 265 was donated to the city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and set on static display there until 1975. Then she was moved to the Illinois Railway Museum in Union, Illinois, where she currently lives. Milwaukee Road 261 had a far more active story, however. She was donated to the National Railroad Museum in Green Bay, Wisconsin in 1958. Nowadays, she's owned, operated, and maintained by the Minneapolis-based nonprofit organization Friends of the 261. She's an excursion locomotive, and probably one of the best there's ever been. She was restored to operational condition in 1993, and since then has logged more than 25,000 miles, 40,000 kilometers, under her own power. She's an impressive piece of work, demonstrating the potential of steam technology, as well as just being a great excursion train. People love her, despite not having the flair of the daylight, or the royal status of 611, or the legendary status of 844, 261 sits in the background, but gets her recognition by performance. Allegedly, she's a joy to work with, and a joy to ride. The last information I have on her shows that there are plans to possibly convert her to oil firing, which isn't something that Milwaukee Road actually hadn't done. 262, 263, 267, and 269, her lost sisters, were all converted to oil at some point. So it's not like this can't be done, and perhaps it would make it more economical to run her in the future. Either way though, she's got plenty of fans, and is a great representative of just how good Alco was at making steam locomotives. And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders. Thomas Ward, Sumdu 267, Orange Glass, Royal Hudson 2860, Lord Hawk 444, Benjamin Owens, Kitsu 131 s 232 Mr. Black Rose, Josh Johnson, Metal for Life Guy, and Zach A1, Arthur Roy, DM Tribal Typhoon, Tommy Rossini, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Joshua Long, Alaric Jaspers, Brian, Jack Carson's Railroad Videos, Major Klutz, Hayden DeGrow, Master of None, Dr. Racer78, Crystal Morgan, Ohio Trucker One, and Amtrak 2023 Productions. Tot de Vogende Kier, Dit is Darkness, an ich on ich nehm Afscheid von Julie Allemal.